Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. Hey guys, thanks for being listeners to the show. Go to dentalimplantpractices.com and find all of our resources. Also find us on Facebook, Dental Implant Practices page on Facebook. And go to iTunes and leave me a review on iTunes so we can help spread the message. Thanks. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Implant Practices podcast. I'm your host, Philip Gordon. And today it's a a huge honor for me to introduce Scott Westermeyer and Maria Mitziak. Guys, thanks for being on the show today. Hey, thanks. We're happy to be here. Thanks. Now, this is the first uh, kind of duo podcast I've had, so this is great. I'm, I'm excited to get... Scott, you're a uh, dentist up in Buffalo, and Maria, you are the uh, COO, Director of Operations of um, the kind of business and um, Chief Operating Officer of, of just the business or the dental practice as well. Actually, uh, the dental practice, and, and uh, we currently have more than one location and so director of operations of of the locations that we have yeah it's a business and practice and the same thing yeah yeah yeah. so some some people have things structured differently so uh you guys have multiple locations up there in uh, buffalo new york is that right correct we do now great yeah well that's a that's an endeavor on it on its own i'm sure we could spend a whole couple podcasts on that but you know my, my podcast is about dental implants and scott i uh I kind of uh, knew about you for a while and then have heard about some things you're doing. I, I think you you guys have a really interesting story and a real interesting program going on up there. And I thought, you know, I want to Im- increase the amount of business I do with my dental implant practice. I know a lot of other people do too. And I think you guys have something really neat figured out. So, you know, a lot of this podcast, I want to really see if we can get you to tell your story and, and kind of get your ideas. I know you've you've got things laid out for people to use that um, can, can really get them up and running with, you know, increasing uh, their their implant practice. And um, so, what we want to do is try to get that out of you today, okay, Scott? Get all the get all <laughs> yeah, the secrets. It's, yeah, all the secrets. Well, listen, we we enjoy teaching this. It's um, it's kind of fun. It's it's definitely old school, and it's not rocket science. But I'll tell you what, we built a heck of a practice uh, on the back of this very uh, strategy, and uh, anybody can do it. Um, there's some markets that are a little tougher than others. I think if you're right in the middle of Manhattan, it's a little more difficult, but, uh, if you're in a, I don't know, some middle market city, anywhere in the country, um, you can pull this off identically to the way we do it. And I guess the goal of the podcast, Phil, is to be able to tell our story and kind of really lay out some details, uh, exactly how we did it step-by-step such that a listener could say, yeah, I'm going to do that too. You know? And, uh, so we're, we're going to do it just like that, almost kind of lay out a recipe. If you find what we've done is attractive and it sounds like something you might want to pull off for your practice, this podcast is for you. <laughs> and Marie and I are going to go back and forth. She's gooder at some stuff than I am. So uh, we'd be happy to share the story with her. Yeah, no, no great. I guess a little background. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, why don't you, why don't you start telling about, uh, tell me about your practice and kind of where you're, where you're uh, how you got started and, and uh you know, some steps you've taken along the way and then, and then where you're at now. Well, like you, Phil, um, my dad was a dentist also, and we practiced together for about 12 years. And uh, I graduated back in 86. Uh, my dad and I ran together for 12 years. And when he retired, uh, actually, we sold half the practice to a classmate of mine. And uh, we call the practice Westermeyer Martin Dental Care uh, with our last names. And um, my grandfather was a dentist also, so I'm third generation, and we're in a suburb of Buffalo. And as you know, Buffalo is not exactly uh, a Los Angeles economy. It's um, it's an old steel town. And um, back when back when the recession hit, we had I would say a strong suburban general two dentist practice, and things were going wrong swimmingly until I thought I could uh, hit a home run in real estate because I was dabbling outside of dentistry, because all my friends were doing cool things like that. And I, so I said, I can do this too. So I went out there and I got caught right at the wrong time. And uh, uh, the recession hit. This real estate guy I was partnered with, uh, turned out to be a crook and a perfect storm of bad luck. And I lost a bunch of money. So I kind of came back with my tail between my legs to the practice. And I said to Maria, who had been with me years, and, you know, we're good friends and comrades in the practice. And um, Maria had been bothering me to uh, try something <laughs> for over the years. 
Yeah, uh, go ahead. You tell. You tell <laughs> your idea. <laughs> well, I, you know, we um, going backwards a little bit. We uh, at the practice, we we were no strangers to to marketing. We uh, always looked for uh, marketing the kind of things that kind of cases that we wanted to see more of in the practice. And at that point, prior to that, it was implants, it was sedation, things of that nature. And the more we started, the more we advertised. Uh, implants and sedation, the more phone calls and more we, we would get at the practice and people would call us and wanted, you know, instead of my front desk ladies taking appointments and scheduling appointments and they were spending all this time on the phone answering, what are these implants? And, you know, everybody had, everybody knew every, somebody who had an implant and it worked well or it didn't work well. We, we got the real sense and feeling that there was a lot of confusion in the marketplace. And I also know, and I learned this a while back, that people just don't buy what they don't understand. And reaching back into my background, I actually uh, had worked in an ophthalmology practice for a while, and we did seminars uh, to explain to the public what exactly uh, electric refractive surgery was, and you know now it's called LASIK. And once people understood it, they they were all for it, and we had a great conversion. And I thought, why can't we why can't we bring this into dentistry? It's the same thing. There was a lot of confusion. People didn't understand it, and that's when Scott kind of gave me a little bit of pushback because Scott said, you know, it's hard enough to get people to come in when they have appointments, let alone have them coming in out of their own volition just to hear about teeth, which is what we talk about all day. But at that point, like Scott said, we were kind of desperate. We need, we needed to grow. We knew we needed to grow the practice. And um, so we thought, well, what do we have to lose? Let's, let's put on these seminars. And, um, well, you know, I, we would see um, spikes of real high production occasionally, as we all have. If you guys are doing implants, you know that. And uh, it became kind of clear, duh, that if the schedule was full of uh, higher value patient cases, that that we we're going to perform better. But the trick was, how do we get more of those? Because um, you know, onesie twosie, everybody gets onesie twosie implants. But um, if we could load that schedule up with a lot more implants, a lot more uh, larger restorative cases, that'd be great. So how do we do it? So long story short, Marie prevailed and said, uh, "Let's try one of these seminars." And uh, I was a little chicken to do it. So we, we got our implant salesperson to come stand at the podium and do a little dog and pony show. And uh, so we ran some ads and uh, put some people in the waiting room. And we had kind of a nice waiting room. So we uh, got bodies in there. And the implant sales rep did the, her talk. And as I watched her do it, I'm like, God, we can do that better than she can. <laughs> so, so long story short, we started doing it. And we've had a lot of fun with it. Now, that was eight years ago. Yeah, this was 2008, actually. So it's actually nine years ago. And uh, I want to tell you, that very night was the kind of a night that went down in history because when we realized how the people in the room reacted to their newfound knowledge about implants and turned around and said, hey, I'd like to schedule a consult with you. And, you know, we had 30 people in the room that night, I think. And when we did the math and figured out how much dentistry we produced right away, we were like, whoa, this is great. And we didn't even expect it. We were so green of doing this at that point that we just kind of finished the uh, the presentation and there was no call to action or anything. And people started to raise their hands and said, well, how, how can I how can I make an appointment? How can I make a consultation? And then we said, oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll take your appointments right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, at first it was hit or miss. I mean, the first first seminar, we did great. Uh, we decided, well, let's see if this is only beginner's luck or if we can continue and get the same results every single month. And so we had a seminar the following month, and it did just as well in the third month. And, and honestly, we thought after a while we'd start running out of patience. But I will tell you, nine, nine years later, uh, we are now doing these seminars three times a month. Uh, we now have location, uh, two locations, each decidedly on the other side of town. And then we, which those seminars are in the evening on a Wednesday and Thursday. And then for those seniors that don't like to drive in the evening, we have a Friday afternoon seminar. And our numbers of attendees 
after nine years are still just as strong as they were when we first started it. So definitely the... Um, Despite the fact we have four offices in the Buffalo area uh, copying us, they, you know, they send in spies, uh, um, <laughs> see how we did it, take a lot of notes and then go home and uh, then they would try to do the exact same thing. And I would say that nobody seems to stick with it as much as we do. They do it hit or miss. Uh, I'm not sure why, because it takes a little stick to itiveness. Now I'll tell you what, uh, Phil, this isn't isn't for everybody because everybody doesn't. Uh, they they just don't want to get up in front of people and talk. But I will tell you, our friend told me some time ago, uh, doctor means teacher. And w- when you're in a consult doing a treatment presentation. You're teaching, but you're just doing it one-on-one. And if you can put a bunch of people in the room and teach for an hour on a fifth grade level, that's like doing multiple consults at one time. And you filter out the people that are interested from the people that aren't interested and the people that can afford it and the people that can't. And uh, I want to tell you, we've learned so many little trip tips and tricks about how to do this now. We understand why it's successful that uh, we, we're we like a machine now. It's just kind of... Uh, Every month happens like clockwork. We do it the same way every time. We do it old school. It's it's a, just a PowerPoint. It's either on a projector in one office or a large screen TV in the other. And we serve a little food and just have a ball. We're like celebrities. Jeff or I walk in. We uh, get introduced by Maria or one of the ladies working at the office and uh, step up on stage, do our thing. And people absolutely love it. So, so what? Here's here's why we tell you that story. From the first night when we didn't know what we were doing, to so what we're experiencing today is amazing. We're doing knocking at the door this year, doing a thousand implants, and it is 100% due to this strategy. Uh, we're on a little radio, we're on a little TV, and a little print to promote the seminars. And uh, but when people come here we've learned how to kind of transfer the trust and make them feel good about themselves for having learned and then feel good about us because we just treat them like gold while they're here. And once people start to feel that way, they're like, Hey, I want to do this with you. And sometimes they're sitting here with a, with a big uh, franchise that we all know about holding the, the quote in their hands and saying, you know, I like you guys better than, than these guys. I, I'd rather do this with you. And we're like, Hey, great. Come on board. But it's also, in addition to the implants, we've also gotten a whole lot of collateral dentistry. Our schedules are really full. We've had to uh, add to associates. We've had to add more operatories, obviously another location. Uh, But the wonderful thing about the seminars is it it filters out patients who just would not be the right patient for implant or your practice, but it also pre-sells the patient. They, because they understand things like um, what we discussed, bone loss, and what the different options are for uh, replacing maybe one tooth or several teeth or missing teeth, they, they're they pre-sold. They already know what they want by the time they come in for their appointment. Um, what it's also done for us is because we've been doing this consistently, we, we're kind of known as the go-to place for implants, top of mind awareness, um, and the seminars leverage time. So those 20 to 25 people who are in there, the, they um yeah, like they've already pre screened themselves and they're they're not asking the doctor a million questions because those once they get to the appointment, because those questions have already been answered during the seminar. So now we're in a position to make a really bold claim and it's pretty interesting. We place and restore more conventional implants in our general practice than anybody in Western New York. There's some guys that do a bunch of mini implants around here and because they throw them in a bunches at a time they probably do higher numbers you know if you know how many implants go that's the case Um, but nobody does it like we do it and because we place and restore under one roof uh, there's no running around town if something goes wrong we own the issue uh, and take it to completion we back everything up with a warranty and uh, and here's the real magic of this film and we didn't see this coming because every single month we wave our flag and say, we're going to put on a seminar to the public to help you understand. we become perceived in the marketplace as experts. The only ones that decided we were experts is us by saying that. <laughs> you know, we're not God's gift to dentistry. We're, you know, we're not the most awesomest trained surgeons and prosthodontists or anything like that. We do a great job and very high standard of care we deliver, but we now are just top of mind, like Maria said, to the public. And so 
we outperform any other implant outfit around and it's been a pleasure. I'll tell you what, when you do a thousand implants and all the other dentistry that goes along with that, the practice becomes healthy, let's say. Um, we crunched our numbers and we can make another pretty bold claim that says this, when we do a look back and trace the executed treatment back to where it came from, we can say that 50 to to $100,000 comes out of every seminar we do. And that makes it a kind of a worthwhile thing to do once a month. It, it has become our absolutely most lucrative hour of time that we would ever spend doing anything in the practice. So while we used to kind of grumble about it, say, oh, I got to do another seminar tonight. And we remind ourselves, wait a minute, <laughs> this is what feeds the practice like nothing else. So, so we continue to do it. And that's why it's almost nine years doing this. And it's, it's entirely fee for service. People have elected to come to the practice and to our practice, because when they come in, they really don't, they notice everything. They notice the way the team works together. They notice all the creature comforts. They notice the things that we put in place to make it more comfortable for them. Um, so they, they, they elect to come to the practice and have their work done. You know, that's pretty uh, important thing. We're, we're, we don't do a big volume based on discounting or giving anything away or, or cheap insurance plans of any kind. It is full fee, full service. And, uh, uh, an implant and a crown in our office is almost 4,000 bucks. And not that that's bragging, but I just want you to understand that that's, I think anybody could uh, sell implants for 600 bucks, but uh, uh, we don't do it that way. And therefore we can afford to, you know, warranty them and take care of things when they go wrong and buy the, the best implants and that kind of thing. Um, so listen, so what we've done, Phil, is so that this is some take home value to this podcast. We actually put a 10 step, thing together. So if, if this is an attractive idea for someone, you know, they, they, they know how to do implants, they've, they've gone to MISH or whatever training they've done, the maxi course or something, they're all jazzed up to do implants. They just can't get enough traffic through the door to do the stuff they now know how to do. We find a lot of dentists are in that position. This could be the answer for them. And at first, it's going to make you anxious and nervous and jerky. But I want to tell you, um, the people that we've helped do this will tell stories about how it's turned their practice around. And so anybody who finds this helpful, uh, get a pencil out and we're going to go one through 10, exactly what we do and how we do it. And you, if you're a do it yourself or you can, you can do this next month. Do you guys have a, a step-by-step protocol that, that you can walk us through? Is that, is that what you're going to cover with that? And then kind of how you set them up and how you, how you get them going and, uh, and how, to, how to actually put people in the chairs? Is that, is that kind of what you're talking about? Exactly. Let's yeah. do it right now. We'll okay. run, run right through it. Try to do it. Go ahead, Maria. You do step one. Step one. So the first thing you have to decide is when you're going to have it. So commit to a date, commit to a time, commit to a location. Uh, we like to have them in the offices. People who come into your office already feel comfortable. It's not a strange place to them, but it can be a hotel or restaurant. We did it in a in a hotel for, we did it at the local Marriott for a couple of years and that worked out well. Uh, we find that evenings work best, e- some either on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. We do ours at 6.30 uh, in the evening. But um, like I said, we also added a Friday afternoon one for people who don't like to drive in the evening. Um, so it sounds kind of like uh, pretty basic, commit to a date. But I want to tell you, when you're a little, because we, we thought about this for a long time before we did it, right? So when we finally committed to the calendar and said, okay, whatever the date was in February, I think, of all times. Yeah, in, in Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. But we, we said, okay, February 22nd or whatever it was, that we are doing this. And once we inked it into the calendar that we said there's no backing out of this. So then we had to get all this stuff and I'm ready to go for it. But the first thing we had to do is figure out, okay, how can we build an audience? We got to get as many bodies to sit down in our waiting room as we can and listen to us. So we had to figure that stuff out. So there was ad that we had to write, um, deadlines that we had to meet to get ad copy to the newspaper and the radio and that kind of thing. And, um, and in fact, that is Maria's next step. And <laughs> you do it. So you say it. <laughs> okay. So we, um, we, uh, used to start a month before and we thought everybody, you know, people would write it down on their calendars and things. And through the years, what we found is that actually the more, uh, the closer the advertising to the date uh, of the seminar, the better, the better the results. So right now we start about 10 days out from the actual seminar date and just uh, consistency and frequency 
and we we get a a, a good turnout. And the other thing is, remember, I, I've seen Dennis, we shared this with, they, they always try to market themselves. They try to market their practice. That's not what we're doing here. We're actually marketing the event. Um, There's a distinction there. You got to catch it. Uh, because yeah, when somebody sees an ad for uh, Philip Gordon, they're like, oh yeah, Philip Gordon's advertising his practice. But it's important to make the distinction that you're advertising an event, an educational event that may or may not happen again. We're known for having that monthly seminar, but initially when you're introducing that to your market, it's just a one-time event, a one-off thing. So it, it ain't about Philip Gordon this time. It's about the education that they're going to take home so they get clarity on what these these crazy implants that they keep hearing about are all about. You have to commit to a budget because you're going to spend, we used to, what do we spend, about 7000 or so? You just got to spend a few bucks to get people to sit in the room. But don't, don't be foolish about that uh, because... <laughs> How many implants do you have to do to recover that? And there's a whole bunch more than one or two implants that are going to be sitting in that audience, believe me. Um, so you just, you just have to be a little bold. The people that we've shared this with said, oh, I think we'll print some flyers up and uh, put them on cars in a parking lot or just some kind of little lame marketing thing doesn't fly. If you're a marketer at all, what you can do is tag on the notice about the seminar to any other marketing you do whether that be TV, radio, direct mail, anything, but you're, you're probably already doing some marketing that will support the advertisement of the seminar. Okay. So we do a lot, of, we do a lot of different things. You know, we, like Scott said, we tag on to our radio spots, uh, conservative talk radio spots, tag on to our TV where we do postings on Facebook, on our website, um, people in our area still read the newspaper. So we'll put freestanding inserts into the Sunday paper that works very well for us. But don't forget, there's also all the internal uh, advertising that we can do as well. You can go through your software, create a report through your dental software and pull out all the patients who wear partials currently or dentures or have missing teeth and send them an invitation. Send them um, uh, an invite invitation to come to the seminar. Uh, and the other thing is ha have your implant company help you. They, uh, of course, it's in their best interest to have you sell as many or place as many implants as possible. And so they'll, they're usually pretty good with helping you with some of the costs associated with the implant. So then as, as a step three, as a, we, we encourage people to make a reservation. It's almost like a, you know, an airline flight or something like that. And uh, the idea is to create a little sense of urgency, a little sense of scarcity, like a limited number of seating available. So they have to call in, reserve a seat, but then we always casually say we, we save room for some walk-ins too. But the idea then is so when people are registered, not only can we uh, know how many we're going to have so we know how much food to buy, but then we can send them a welcome packet that, again, is full of testimonials of happy patients that came to the seminar, not necessarily that had this, the service done, that just found the seminar so helpful in making a decision about what was best for them and how what a great job we did explaining and making them feel comfortable. That's what it's all about. Um, so now we know how many people are coming. We can put out, uh, if 20 people say they're going to come, then we get ready for 15. And there's a little psychology there. You put 15 chairs out so that if everybody does come, you're having to go scramble to find more chairs and it creates an energy in the room that's like, oh, this is special. This is popular tonight. What's going on? And when, make sure your teams, doctors, make sure your teams are aware that you're having a seminar and what will be covered and help them with some scripting on when people call to register that the team is excited and say, oh my gosh, you're so smart to do this. It's going to give you so much information that you'll need so that you can make an informed decision for yourself. Have them kind of confront uh, confirm that the people who are calling and registering are making the right choice for attending. And I'll tell you, once we started to do that, it really did cut down on people no showing for the seminars. And I'll tell you, you somebody's right now thinking, damn, this costs some money. You guys are going to take out the ads. You're going to buy food. You're going to pay a few employees to stick around for the evening and do this. Well, I want to tell you one way to offset those costs is you get a sponsor, meaning there are vendors that sell into your practice, namely probably your implant. Uh, provider would be perfectly willing to help uh, offset some of these costs. If you think about it, what do you think the actual final salesman of an implant is in the in the line of sales? I mean, after the manufacturer makes it, the distributor gets it, it gets to your office, you now have to sell it to the end consumer. 
And I'll be darned if, if I don't feel that I deserve some help doing that from the company that's selling them to me. And it, I will spare them, but because I, uh, <laughs> I don't think they get excited about when I share it all the time. But when I went to my implant rep and I said, I want some love here, he was quick to say, okay, what do you need? <laughs> and so he helps us a great deal and, and makes a big difference. All right, so let's do another. Step four, design and create your presentation. So everybody thinks this is what the whole magic is all about, Get put together a PowerPoint or a keynote. And uh, if you do this stuff regularly, uh, it, it's easy to do. It's an absolute fifth grade deal. And here's docs. Everybody makes the same mistake in the beginning. They think they have to be all scientific and, and uppity and everything else. This is not what this seminar is about. This seminar is about cartoons and easy drawings and a few facts about bone loss and osteointegration, maybe, maybe a little things about grafting, some great before and afters, um, some stuff about how your office rolls. Uh, we do it. We actually have a, how many slides do we have? 52, I think. I think it's more than that. No, that's yeah. the actual, no, it's up to like 80. Oh, 80. <laughs> we can't, we put too many in there probably. And it takes us almost an hour and a half to do it. But uh, we stop and tell stories. We joke around. We, we speak wrong. Uh, we, we don't try to come off like the ultimate authorities, but we are very confident and very friendly and uh, easy going. And at the end of the night, people just, man, they just fall over themselves to run up to the desk to schedule with us. And all they're doing is scheduling a free console because now they know so much, they just want to find out what it is with their mouth. You know? Yeah. And, and it's very casual. We, we tell people that, um, you know, they're free to ask questions if they like, but if they wait till the end of the presentation, their questions will most likely be all answered. I uh, just want to say no gross pictures. I know dentists um, <laughs> get used to seeing pictures that really sometimes uh, would, would not be so well accepted by your lay audience. So just remember that. But they do like to see a lot of before and afters, pictures of your team. Uh, if you're having it at outside your office, a video walkthrough of your office, different options for missing teeth, bone loss, and definitely discuss fee ranges. You have to give people an idea of what different uh, treatments are in your office because that's the elephant in the room. People are always asking that. And it also helps filter out people in the room for you. Yeah, if you get some tire kicker in the room from the uh, um local, not uh, too mean to say, they, they can't really afford this kind of thing. And they come in and they go, oh my God, that is crazy money. I would never do it. That's a perfect place for them to discover that instead of after an hour consultation with you sucking up your time in the course of a regular busy day, this is the perfect place for them to understand what kind of investment it, it takes to get implants. And by the way, I took a great hint from our clue from the master presenter, Steve Jobs, and he's taught me two things. You share the state. That's why Maria comes up and tells a story and introduces us. And then we bounce back and forth, me and my partner, telling the story. And then when, we, uh, when we're finished, we give it back to Maria. So the, the stage kind of keeps changing. It keeps it in case you're monotoned or, or whatever. It doesn't bore the audience to death. The other thing is you keep it simple. Never put a paragraph worth of information up on the, on the uh, slide. It's just onesie, two line things couple of pictures, simple clarity. Really is fifth grade. So oh, let's see, we did that. Let's see. One of the things that people are always uh, blown away by is by uh, bone loss. The fact that when you're missing teeth, you start losing your bone and people just don't know that. General public is not aware of that. And that, that becomes a real urgency issue for them. It took us about a year to figure that out. We, we, yeah. we always ask people, so what made you come in? And they said, oh my God, when you said you lose teeth, you lose bone. I didn't know that. I don't want to lose any bone. I want an implant here. Right. Like, <laughs> Oh, and after we heard that several times, we, you know, we're so used to just knowing that, but we didn't know how impactful it was to the general public. So we now, because we understand that, repeat it several times during the course of the seminar. So nobody misses it. Okay, enough about that. Step five. You want to organize your seminar team. So you're going to need a pregame team, a game time team, and a postgame. So pregame, they take the calls, they send the welcome packets, they confirm the registered uh, people. Game time, you want to put the right pe people on the right seats of the bus. In other words, who's going to be your 
your shiny bright faces, warm and fuzzies who are welcoming the people as they're first coming in. We give tours of the office for the seminars that are in the office. Um, we what They talk about what sets us apart from all the other offices, and that must be scripted and practiced ahead of time. And then post-game follow-up, because there will be a follow-up at at the end of the seminar, for instance, you've got you you want people to come up to the desk and, and to have appointments made. So you need somebody there ready for that. By the way, pre-block those times. You don't want them looking for them while people are standing in line. So you want to have pre-blocked new patient seminar points. Um, also, a little gift box. Um, we serve food. We have a little buffet, but we're actually changing that to a little box full of goodies, uh, things with our name on them, little little kind of giveaways that um, you can do whatever you deem most fun. But the idea being that it doesn't spoil, you can inventory them. And when somebody takes them home, rather than having invested in food, now they've invested in something that ends up on the coffee table or the kitchen counter or a magnet on the refrigerator, something to that effect doesn't go away and acts as a constant reminder of who we are and what they learned. Okay, okay. And practice the presentation. Uh, when you're organizing your team, just practice. Do address your rehearsal because people in the audience, they really do notice everything. Uh, it's And again, we said that before. It's not in a seminar. It is an experience. They're looking at your office. They're looking to see how clean it is. They're looking to see how modern it is. They're looking to see how do the doctors inter, uh, interact with the team? How does the team interact with each other? Are you authentic? Is your team authentic? Can they trust you? And do they like you? Those are the things that are going through their heads. That's actually the number one goal of the evening uh, is to just make them like you. <laughs> and you got to do whatever you can to make that happen. It's not, it's what you do normally every day in practice anyway, but now you're on stage. So you're really the kind of the pressure's on to make that happen in 60 or 90 minutes. All right. Step six. You want to make your audiovisual equipment that's working, that you, you've rehearsed with, that you know it works. The worst thing in the world is to find out your laptop is screwed up or the projector doesn't talk or some, some dumb thing. Because I want to tell you, you want to get nervous, have 20 people sitting there waiting for you to come on stage and say something intelligent and your stuff doesn't work. Man, I want, ask me how I know. <laughs> that is a, a bad feeling. So not only get it together, but practice it and and. Even if you did it last month, make sure it's all working the next month or the right. next time you do it. Right. So step seven, this is one of the most important things uh, with a seminar and patients always tell us it's, it's their turning point and that it sucks to get a raving fan patient testimonial, have them come to the seminar, give them a little bit of coaching. Um, if you just let them talk on their own, they're probably going to go in, in the areas you don't really want them to. Uh, most audiences just really want to know what life was like for that patient before they had their treatment. Did it hurt? How long did it take? Was it worth it? Did it hurt? Uh, we we usually, people who have a hard time, you know, we'll go up there with them and we'll do kind of an interview with them. Um, people who come on, because otherwise people who come on by themselves, you know, they're all usually afraid and nervous, but then they kind of like being on stage. And then sometimes we've had to get the cane out and pull them <laughs> off. So um, you want to cut, yeah, you want to kind of give them coaching and, and be up there with them in case they stutter, in case they fall. Cause you know, and if you're not sure how they're going to be, here's how you control, control that situation. You stand up in front next to them and kind of you ask them pointed questions, leading questions. So you get the information out that you'd like. If they're very comfortable running on their own, you step off to the side and let them take the stage. But if they're a little bit shy or not sure how to do it, then you just ask a set of questions for them and it'll all start to flow. And then when the audience starts to ask them questions, my God, get ready for you to be sold by your patient who loves you. And by the way, doctors, if, when, when you go back to your staff and go, who should we ask to do this? You know, who, who's a happy implant patient? They'll have some names. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't know this already, there are people just dying to thank you in some way for what you've done for them. And this is a great avenue for them to come and brag about the dentist that fixed them up, who they feel fondly about, and they just want other people to do what they've done. And this, this is a, a huge Huge, huge thing because you can sell yourself all night long, but when somebody else gets up there in a third party and says how wonderful you are, man, people buy into that in a heartbeat. This leads me into something else that I want everybody to understand. You've probably heard of a popular book by a guy named Robert Cialdini. 
He wrote a book called Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. And what he does is he discusses principles of human behavior and persuasion in his book. And it turns out our seminars have been so successful because we accidentally employ so many of the principles of persuasion. For example, some of the the, uh, principles are the principle of authority. By the very virtue of the fact that you're a doctor, you can exercise your the authority of your title in sharing information with people. And people will respect that right away and respond to it more than if just some knucklehead on the street says, yeah, you got to get an implant. You know, they work like this. It's different when it's coming from you. Also, there's a, a principle called reciprocity. When you offer food and a gift and an education, there's a little bit of a feeling I got to give back. And when the, when the patient, or I'm sorry, when the audience feels that way, they feel almost psychologically obligated to, to re- reciprocate in some way. And that way is to make an appointment, actually. And into, because at the end, we ask them, say, now we'd like you to go up and make an appointment, find out about yourself and take advantage of this great offer we have for them. And they do. And I want to tell you, when the first person stands up and goes over to the desk and schedules their appointment, believe me, everybody else is watching that very carefully. And that's when the floodgates open, because that's called social proof. When somebody says, by virtue of their actions, that it's okay to do this, I've decided these guys are cool, I'm going to go over and appoint with them. It gives everybody else like mental, emotional permission to do the same thing. And they kind of run up there and stand in line at the at the counter. It's, it's almost funny to watch. And one of the other principles I'll just, uh, I already touched on, it's called affinity. And that is, it's just what they call likability. If you're just plain, pleasant, smiley, everybody's loving on the guests, um, the cracking up, making, just making a nice light environment. How can you not like us? Well, that's, that goes a long way sort of people feeling comfortable to decide to do some work with you. Okay. On to step eight. You want to make sure to give your audience uh, an offer or a call to action that gives them an incentive to make an appointment that night. So what we do is we we tell them what a initial consultation uh, includes. We tell them what we normally charge for that. And then we offer it to them at no charge if they make that appointment that evening. We sweeten the pot by giving them a special gift certificate worth, you know, we offered for $150 uh, and it's towards any work at all in our practice. And people just really like that. Uh, We have to just make them an offer they can't refuse and they have to want to take the next step. The thing to remember though, is make sure that they know that there's really no obligation. Once they make this appointment, there's really no obligation. There's no commitment to them. Once we tell them that you could just see like their shoulders going down They're They're okay with it. Um, there's, you know, obviously we know once we start them on this road, that, that chances are nine out of 10, they're going to continue to treatment, but we take away that fear from them that there's an obligation and a commitment. We do ask them if they make an appointment to make sure they, they show up, which they do to make it no commitment. The real take home point about step eight though, is <laughs> Sometimes you get through with a presentation and you're like, okay, that's all, folks. Thanks for coming. That's the wrong way to end it. At the end, just like fifth graders, you tell them, okay, you can stand up and go over and see Susie and she can set up that free consult appointment we've prearranged for you. And in other words, you go ahead. Susie's in the back room. Stand up. Take advantage of that right now. And uh, help me finish this food so I don't have to eat it all before you guys leave. Blah, blah. blah. Make a little joke. And then you ask. When you direct people to the desk, I walk around the room and I ask one question so as to not be salesy or anything. I'm still taking the teacher role. I stick my hand out. I swear I do this. Quote me on this. I said, was that helpful tonight? My God, people sometimes go to tears. Sometimes I get a hug. They do. They've been confused or, or whatever they're seeking. They they found their answers tonight. And because we're the Messiah of the, the information, they just. They just want to work with us because we've made them feel better about that. So that's the key question. Was this helpful tonight? Bingo. Not did you sign up or anything like that. They'll have other questions they'll ask you, but that's all you have to say to them. People are so grateful. They come up and they thank you so much for doing this for the community. Nobody else does this. It gets to be good for your heart and your head after all. It does. It brings you back to why you went into dentistry, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Step nine, follow up people that came that couldn't appoint or weren't sure, or people that said they were going to come but no-showed, or other people that just called the practice. All these people are, are leads 
they, they're, they're what they call a warm market. They have some interest in implants. And now you have captured those names and uh, addresses or emails, whatever. And you're just foolish to not follow up with a, an email sequence, a print letter sequence, something. We missed you, anything. There's, there's gold in them, their lists. And uh, to not follow up is just a, a silly waste of uh, a great resource. And track your results. You want to make sure, you know, want to check to see how many advertising leads you got, how many of those turned into registration, how many of those turned into people who appeared, how many appointed, and you're going to tweak. You just tweak, tweak, tweak. You know, you try whatever works, you amplify it, whatever it doesn't, you try something else, and that's how you get to success. Step 10 seems like another no-brainer, but it <laughs> didn't immediately hit us. And at, right as soon as you do this once, you need to do it again. Because if you catch the drift of the power of this thing, it's being available on a regular, almost predictable basis. So that's why we've chosen to do these things every single month. And we've done that for nine years now. And uh, the, the results are the same. We have the same numbers of people show up. It's the really weirdest thing. Even despite the fact that we have other dentists in the area doing them now, uh, people just keep coming. The numbers keep paying off. The, the stats keep staying similar. And it's amazing. And, you know, I remember I said you get a lot of implants walking in the door, signing up. That's great. But you get a lot of collateral dentistry. Sometimes it's a big crown bridge case. It doesn't need any implants. Sometimes people can just afford partials. That's fine. You know, I'll do those too. But what I want everybody to know is this year, and this is, I'm saying this for a frame of reference, not to brag, because it's important. And it, it surprises some people. This year we're going to do in three offices, $11 million in production. And the vast majority of those numbers come out of or are born out of these seminars. We do eight and one and a half, eight, eight million dollars in one, our mothership practice and about a million and a half in the other two. And uh, those are smaller, newer offices. And uh, I want to tell you, it's possible. And that's, remember, fee for service without insurance. We've built a, a great thing out of this. So I kind of laugh when people say, oh, I don't want to do that, or that doesn't work. I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever you choose to believe is true, but it's been awfully good to us. And uh, it'll be the most productive hour you spend in the entire month. And after a while, you get to really enjoy it. It's, it's a real heartwarming thing to do after a while. But the important thing is it's frequency, it's the consistent message, and it's important to be first in your community to do this. You're establishing, you're claiming your authority. Um, and you know, the biggest fear, I guess, is what if we do a seminar and nobody comes and I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's happened to us. It's happened a couple of times throughout Mm -hmm. the nine years. Um, and Dr. Scott here wasn't very happy about it, obviously. Uh, but what I reminded him about was that nobody really knows that nobody showed up except us. (laughs) Everybody else thought everybody, the rest of the world just saw the fact that there was a seminar and he just assumed that, you know, we had a successful one. So, and the message was out there. It was consistent and it was frequent. The yeah. crowds keep coming. I don't know if we've ever figured out exactly how many hundreds of thousands of people the, the ads probably touch. And only, you know, anywhere between 20 and 30 people show up. But those thousands and thousands of people saw that they're doing that seminar again. And that just registers in their mind. And sometimes when they finally have a need or come to the mental conclusion that they need to learn more about this, we're already positioned as the authority. We're the place to go. If we're so bold as to say, come learn from us, we must know what we're talking about. And that all that sub psychology really pays off because when people walk in our door of our practice, they're halfway to yes, no matter what we're presenting, because they've already, they already have so much confidence in, in who we are and what we stand for. And it, it enhances all the other areas of the practice, not just the, the title, you know, stuff about implants. Everything takes a ride on it. It's great. But um, so listen, Phil, there, um, I, I know we're not a format that we can exactly take questions, but we acknowledge that uh, because we remember how it was for us, we hesitated doing this for so long because there was kind of a lot of stuff to, to get together. It's, it's not rocket science. It's kind of like kind of like baking a cake. There's only, you know six or eight ingredients. If you throw them on the counter, you could eventually figure out how to put it together and get a cake out of it. But if you had a recipe, you'd get a cake the first time you did it. And so 
one of our consultants that used to work with us was so fascinated by what we've done with this. They said, why don't you put this thing in a box and help other people do the same thing? And so with a little prodding, we did that. We, we put together a, a literally a, a seminar in a box. We, we call it the ultimate seminar blueprint. And, and it's all, it's all put together for you. So it's done for you. You don't have to think of anything. Now I want to be very clear. You can go do this on yourself and you can figure this out. It's not much different than having a party and all the different things you have to do to have a party, get the invitations out, get the food ready, get the place ready, get people in place, do a little presentation and, uh, and uh, write down names, make appointments. It's very simplest. I guess that's what it is. But when you sit down and realize what it really takes to pull that off, it'll cost you. So it'll take you time. You'll eventually get there, but it'll take you time. And as a dentist, you should be acutely aware of something called the um, yeah, right. I can just put that time right. analysis. No, the cost, the cost analysis of time. Cost cost benefit of time. Benefit of time <laughs> I can't one. say. In other words, if we if it's true that we make fifty or a hundred thousand dollars every time we do a seminar, and you thought, yeah, yeah, I want to do one of these for the practice. Well, would it make sense to do it right the first time, or do it six months from now when you screw it up? four or five times and then finally get it okay. I mean, think about that. It just makes sense. Get this done right the first time. Follow the directions and get her done right away. Um, and when we put it together, we put it together so that it would be easy for the team to follow. It's not something that the dentist absolutely has to do. It's a step-by-step, super simple, paint-by-number system that um, totally digital. It's downloadable. It, t- it includes time-sensitive checklists, everything they need to do. Just what check do you mean, it out. an example of a checklist? Please? Just, you know, what, what to do six weeks from today, what to do five weeks from today, what to do four weeks, all the different things that, you know, all the little details that need to be done. And it's not that, like, again, like Scott said, rocket science, just you have to remember them all. And, you know, as time went on, we kept adding to it and making adjustments. Um, it's got the present, actually it's got the whole presentation in it which you can customize. You can put in your own pictures, your before and afters, put your teams in there. It's got all sorts of letters, forms, and it's continuously, because it is downloadable and digital, we continuously add updates, what's working, what's not. So we also put in there, we, we made a video. It's like a training video. In other words, it walks you through the presentation and said, here's why we say X, you know, how often we say X, and when to say X. And uh, so that training video is very helpful for somebody who's a little bit anxious about doing something like this and then just to be even more weird i guess we made a video uh, like a fly on the wall video we just ran a video recorder in the corner of the room when we did this so people can kind of see what the room looks like the tempo and the simpleness of the conversation of the uh, presentation so it's just kind of a way to spy in and see how a successful one works we put together a report on seven things to that'll kill the thing (laughs) we call them the seven fatal mistakes we put a customization guide in there some directions on how to tweak up your your keynote to make it look like it's all yours. We, you can use our welcome letter, our follow-up letter. Uh, we update this thing all the time when we find a new cool thing to do or a good uh, animation. We share that. and uh, We put sample ads in there, print ads. We've got sample radio copy we've used, uh, scripting for TV spots, um, templates for, for print ads. There's, there's a lot of things in there because that's one of one of the highlights that people are always asking about is how do I get people to attend and what or how do I advertise? So we've included that in there for you as well. So uh, if, if this appeals to you and it's something you'd like to save time with and maybe just get a kit so you get there faster, that's all it's really doing is buying you time. But dentists, we sell time. So if you appreciate that. You realize getting there faster is even better. We got there. So Scott, let me, let me just jump, jump in. Cause uh, I've had a bunch of questions when we started, and I said, okay, I'm just going to let you guys go through your presentation, and I'm going to see uh, you know, maybe how many questions I have left. And I can honestly say, I think you nailed most of them. I've been kind of going through some of these. So to your point, I had a consultant tell me two years ago that we should have been doing this. He wasn't even a dental consultant. He was just a, a marketing consultant locally. And I knew it was a good idea, but the thing that held us back was just the implementation, just getting the work done to prepare for it and to market it and then to get the people there and knowing what to do. And he knew it was a good idea and we knew it was a good idea. And the idea eventually died and it never happened. And so I think the genius, of, <laughs> yeah, the genius of part of this is, is I, I knew two years ago I should have been doing it, but the, the genius that you bring is 
the the blueprint recipe, the just the the plug and play, drop in, ready to go. And I I or anybody else could be doing this in four to six weeks in 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 their hometown with a system that's proven, it's been tweaked, it's been developed, it's been uh, you know uh, scientifically studied on, on your end to say this works, this doesn't do this, don't do that, and you're going to be successful. Yep, yep. And, I, and I think that's what people are looking for. You know, I think what you're saying is most people can do this, but not everybody's going to just because of the, the workload. So you've kind of created a shortcut to get to the end and say, you know, if, if you guys do this, you're going to have great success. I, I agree. You know, and you know what? There was a time when I thought I was uh, the, good, the good presenter, the good salesman, and I had to go out of town. So uh, we had to have like a B team come in and do the presentation. I'm like, oh, God, they're going to kill it. They got the exact same results that I did every time. And every time that happens, when me or Jeff were out of town and we put in a, a substitute presenter, like my associates stand up and do this now, too, and they get the same conversions. It's, it's incredible. It's, just, it's because of these these principles of influence, I think. And if you're just warm and friendly and authentic, people buy into that. They just like that. It's just, that's how we roll in our practice. And it, so it's a good fit for us. So if that sounds like it's a good fit for you, knock yourself out. I mean, here's, we put together a website. If you want to look at this, we put together a website. It's called theempoweredpractice.com. Just how it sounds, theempoweredpractice.com. And on there, there's a, a way to buy this. Uh, we did fill up a, a favor tonight. We normally sell this thing for $59.97, like 6000 bucks, And uh, it's got all kinds of bonuses go along with it. But at the end of the day, what we agreed to do for Phil's audience was to uh, knock $1,000 off of that. And so for $49.97, uh, if you pay all at one time, it costs that. And there's a breakdown if you do it, oh, a three pay. I forget what the number is offhand, but you can break it out down over three months and make it a little easier to swallow. But you'll earn, that's the fastest ROI on any product anywhere you could get. It'll come back to you so fast uh, and make your head spin, I think. But, um, oh, well, that's it right there. It's $17.97 a month if you were to do it in a three pay. I mean, just think about all our crap we buy doctors that cost a bunch of money and you just hope that it pays back. Cirrus machines, lasers, cameras, all this crazy stuff. And they do all, they all have ROI. But there's nothing we've ever done, nothing that even compares to the return on investment that we've done with these seminars. And the other nice thing about this is once that once the doctors buy, they actually get uh, a quick team that reaches out to the docs and walk hand in hand through uh, getting the seminars up and done. So none of this buying and putting it on the shelf actually helps get a quick start and implement it. So we're going to have to cut out in a minute, but I was real quick, I'll just write to the, read you a note a guy sent me. He's a friend of mine. His name's Sean Tarpening, and he's, uh, he's in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And uh, he said, just did our first seminar. We had close to 30 attend and 16 appointed that night. The next day, the third person that came in for their one-on-one -on -one consult was a $50,000 double arch hybrid case. Are you kidding me? Couldn't wait to call Scott and tell him incredible. And he's been doing those things like clockwork ever since, because that proved it to himself that first night. And we hear that kind of stuff all the time. We purchased the blueprint in Miami. Da, 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 da. In seven months, we did over 300,000 in new implant cases. Now we're doing them twice a month. Need I say anything more? We got all kinds of letters that say this stuff. It's great. We love sharing this stuff. So when the docs go to the empoweredpractice.com to purchase this, they need to enter the promo code of Gordon. That's a, a thousand dollar promo code. <laughs> a thousand dollar name, so Gordon. Gordon. My name never sounded so good. <laughs> so so that's uh, G G O R D O N. They type in the promo code and that'll get them the uh, the thousand dollars off. Yes, yeah. sir. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I'm I'm really excited about this, guys. I I'm telling you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna join on board with this. I'm gonna do this. I'm opening my new practice in um, May uh, or the first of June, and I'm gonna put one of these on the calendar in July. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post uh, the date that I'm gonna do it on. Um, my Facebook page, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna post uh, the results what I do from this on there too. So I'm gonna help. I'm gonna I'm gonna join in and do it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna post what I do. I'll just put it out there. I'll, I'll put my butt on the line and say, okay, I'm gonna do this by the end of July, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show and tell you how what I get from it too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go in with you and say, yeah, uh, if if the blueprint's not enough, I'll I'll show you what I'm doing too, and just to just to kind of back up that that I think it's gonna work. And if you, we actually have a 
a team of uh, kind of like fast start implementers at, at empoweredpractice.com. I think the phone number is right on the site, or if not, there's a contact info on the site, and they will walk you through anything. We, we've encountered all kinds of crazy questions about this, but Phil, you can either get them or you can call me directly, and we'll hold your hand through this and make sure it happens great for you because, um, you know, there's, there's a few little pitfalls, but they're easy to if you know what they are, they're easy to surmount. And I'm going hey, hey, to put, put it on my team, too. What I'm going to do is I've got a great staff, and I feel comfortable Excellent. doing this. But I also know that, like you said, the, the team's going to have to do a lot of this, too. So I know I'm, I'm busy right now, but I know my staff would love to get that production on the books for us. So I'm going to turn half of it over yeah. to them and say, guys, let's just do this. And, and they're, they're always looking for ways to help, uh, help, help the practice. And I, and I think, uh, Mary, you, Maria, you can uh, attest this. You know, officers, office managers want, they want tools like this for the dentist. They, they want to help the practice grow. They just don't always have the answer. Of course. And, and you know, this is, uh, this checklist, this seminar blueprint is, like I said, it's just something the team can just take on. I mean, basically at this point, the doctor just shows up to do the clinical part of the presentation, which is about 45 minutes, but for the rest of it, the team handles everything from step one all the way to the end. Well-oiled machine. Yeah. Now. It's great. Well, guys, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. I know it's been a, uh, a long day and a busy week, and I, I appreciate your time. So, Scott and Maria, I will I will direct people to the empowered practice dot com and uh we look forward to getting started with this and I'll, I'll post all my uh my updates as well and I'm, I'm hoping that um you know we can all just get out there and have more implants and have more dentistry and and uh you know be able to do the right thing for our patients in the practice and i think you know there's there's a lot of benefit for people in this so i i uh, appreciate your time tonight and your willingness to share well thanks for the thanks for the platform and uh and good luck with the podcast. Podcasts are awesome. Now I'm probably one of the older guys that ever listened to them. But uh, podcasting is a great new uh, sport. <laughs> and uh, I love them. I don't listen to the radio anymore. It's great. All right, man. Good night. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. 